Nigeria must be recreated. The chairman, Nigerians Governors Forum, and Governor of Ikite State, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, has said that Nigeria must be recreated to satisfy restructuring agitations. If the nation's social, political, and economic greatness must be attained, must be attained. The governor made the remarks on Saturday while speaking as the guest lecturer at the 50th anniversary of the Center for Historical Documentation and Research, Arewa House in Kaduna. Fayemi advocated for restructuring that will cement the unity of Nigeria and engender a perfect union among its peoples irrespective of their ethnic, religious, cultural and linguistic differences. He also suggested an equitable revenue allocation formula that will speak to the federalism Nigeria has adopted and give more resources to states and local governments which carry more responsibilities. According to him, a review of the sharing formula to 43% for states, 35% to the federal, and 23% to the local governments would go a long way to devolve more responsibilities to constituent units and reduce the concentration of powers at the center. Speaking on the topic on finished greatness, towards a more perfect union in Nigeria. Dr. Fayemi, who is also the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, said, building Nigeria to the status of a country that commands global respect is a continuous work in progress. Dr. Fayemi, who insisted that the 1914 amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorates by the British was not a mistake, as some have argued, adding that the country can use the diversity to achieve greatness if Nigerians would utilize the inherent opportunities. He appealed to Nigerians to come together and urgently tackle issues that divide them. If the dreams of the founding fathers, including the late premier of Northern Nigeria, Sir Amadou Belu, the Sadauna of Sokoto, are to be realized by the present generation. The Ekiti State Governor said all ethnic nationalities should be made to feel important in the Nigerian project. Hence, preference should not be given to a particular ethnic group over others. Dr. Fayemi explained that Nigeria, with over 250 ethnic nationalities, have managed its diversities, whereas some countries in Eastern Europe had balkanized into smaller nations, while Britain is yet to find a, definite, a definitive answer to the Irish, Welsh, and Scottish questions. Fayemi, however, identified sincerity in handling the issues of restructuring as a means of giving assurance to stakeholders of the Nigerian project that achieving greatness through, through unity and diversity was still possible. He argued that issues of devolution of powers, decentralization, restructuring, and such other concepts should not be clothed in ethnic or regional toga, but be used as an opportunity to reimagine and reinvent our country to make it work well for everyone. In essence, our desire to build a more perfect union should be anchored on the principle of devolution of powers. That is, 
reallocation of powers and resources to the country's federating units. The reasons for these are not far-fetched. First, long years of military rule has produced an over-concentration of powers and resources at the center to the detriment of the states. Two, the 1999 constitution, as has been argued by several observers, was hurriedly put together by the departing military authority and was not a product of sufficient inclusiveness. Part of the focus of such an exercise should be what items should remain on the exclusive legislative list and which ones should be transferred to the concurrent list. Other topical issues include derivation principle, fiscal federalism and revenue allocation, land tenure, local government creation and autonomy, ETC. All points considered, the fiscal burden of maintaining a largely if inefficient and overbloated bureaucracy is a metaphor for shooting oneself on the foot. According to him, the evolution of Nigerian federalism has not served Nigeria's best interests, and it is not surprising that the polity has witnessed protests at every attempt at constitutional re-engineering. Two prominent examples he noted were the 2005 Constitutional Reform Conference convened by President Obasanjo's administration and the 2014 National Conference at the instance of ex-President Goodluck Jonathan. He explained that in the two conferences, the delicate issue remains that of restructuring, often dubbed devolution of power, decentralization, true federalism, ETC. Asking, but for how long can we continue to run away from this issue and continue to pretend that somehow it would resolve itself someday? Alluding to recent nationwide protests by youths, Governor Fayemi said it was high time the nation's leaders looked into ways to solve problems which turned an innocuous online protest over police brutality into an avenue to challenge perceived failures to meet demands for good governance. He said, this is why anyone who holds a semblance of power or authority in this country should be deeply worried by the events of the past few weeks. What started as an innocuous online protest over police brutality snowballed before our very eyes into a mass movement that assumed more frightening dimensions. From the demands to from the demands to hashtag answers, we have seen vigorous demands for greater accountability, greater efficiency in government. What I understand the youths to be saying is that we the older generation have failed them by our inability to create a system that supports their dreams and accommodates their aspirations. From the language of their, of their protests, we can clearly see that our youths feel pushed to the margin of our nation's socio-political and economic structures. It is incumbent on us to listen to what they are saying and a lot more to what they are probably not saying yet. For over a decade, several analysts have noted that our massive youth population could be a major demographic advantage to our country if it is properly harnessed. Years of neglect and failure to make the right investments to support this population is now quite predictably turning it to a major disruptive force and a time bomb. I am afraid that the bomb has started to tick. 
We must therefore act fast and start now to create systems that provide opportunities for our young people and make it possible for them to attain their God-given potentials. In, response, in responding to the challenges that this moment imposes on us, we must recognize that a business as usual approach will no longer be sufficient. What we need is a fundamental re-engineering of our governance system in a way that will make our country work better for everyone. I understand the recent protest as a discursive signal that encapsulates the frustration of our young people at multiple levels. We must therefore engage it as such and try to focus on the opportunities that the situation presents. He added, Fayame, who cited the works of Ben Okri and Utman Dunfodio in the lecture, concluded that there was urgent need to address injustice if Nigerians truly want the system to work. A kingdom can endure with unbelief, but cannot endure with injustice. May we have the courage and the conviction to confront injustice in our country and make Nigeria work for all of us, he added. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular news story? The truth remains that Nigeria must be recreated. And if Nigeria is not recreated, there is huge uh, doom that is said to be unleashed in the country. The hashtag NSAS protest is just what a tips on the iceberg. It is just a little. But we keep our fingers crossed and see how things unfold. What are your thoughts concerning these new stories, guys? Drop by at the comment section. Let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support. And I'll see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.